Hi you guys, it's Amanda with Healthy House on the Block and I'm here with another blog post this week talking about different ways we can make our home healthier, um, clean up the indoor environment so that we're reducing toxins and introducing healthy habits. And this week is all about your drinking water. Um, it's one of the areas that often gets forgotten when we're talking about a healthy house because we think so much about our environment that I think we also tend to forget about what we're consuming and that our water is really a part of our house um, in terms of the fact that that's where we're getting a lot of our drinking water. Um, many of us drink filtered water at home or just tap water. Some of us will go out and buy um, water or we have some sort of filter system like on our counter for water. So I'm going to kind of walk through all of these different um, filter types today in terms of one contaminant. Um, we're looking at copper. Now, if your house is probably, oh, I mean average, it has copper pipes somewhere in it. It's a very um, common way to run popper, uh, lines, plumbing lines in our house. Um, and copper lines are probably one of the most prevalent. There are also other plastic lines that people use. Um, if you have a really, really old house, you might see some sort of like um, galvanized line but most of us have that bright orange copper running through our walls, running through our basements, um, connecting all of our plumbing to our faucets. And that usually is fine, however, um, in a home that has primarily copper, especially if you're using um, a lot of hot water or you have water that just kind of sits in the pipes a lot at different faucets, you might want to consider a filter to get rid of amounts of iron that are unhealthy. So. Iron is a metal um, and it is not toxic to the body in very small amounts. However, um, when we're talking about our plumbing using um, copper lines and all of our water is running through copper lines to our faucets and then we're drinking it, we're probably consuming more copper than we realized. And so, um, it might be something that you want to consider getting rid of. So I'm gonna to talk to you about that today. I'm gonna to take you through some slides. We're gonna go through um, why it is concerning for your health, and then also talk about different homes that have different uh, concerns with copper. Um, some homes have very acidic water, depending on where your water comes from, um, and acidic water is going to leach more copper into it than a water that has like a very balanced pH. So this is something to consider as well. All of these things we wanna just kinda of take into account. You can easily test your water to see if you have elevated levels of copper. Um, and then there's really amazing options for filtering your water, which I would recommend anyways, even if copper is not your main concern. Um, filtering out your water is going to reduce toxins. We talk about the three ways that we come in contact with toxins and it's ingestion, inhalation, and then absorption. Inhalation and absorption are important, but ingestion is one of the most important. We're giving toxins a direct route to the different organs in our bodies. So by ingesting water and toxins that are in the water, we're just kind of opening up ourselves to a plethora of toxins. So if we can filter out those toxins as many as possible, that's gonna be the best step. So let's go through the slides and I will help you um, understand more about copper in water and why it's something that we want to filter out and how to do it in your house. So let's talk about copper in your drinking water and why it's important to filter out this contaminant and then let's talk about how you can do this most efficiently at your home. So to start off, let's find out how does copper even get in water. Um, it can happen in a couple different ways. The first and most prevalent way that copper enters our water is through our own plumbing um, that runs throughout our homes. Many of us have copper water lines that bring our water from our main water meter through our home to each fixture or faucet. And when these pipes made of copper begin to corrode, they also begin leaching copper into the water. Um, all water has a varying level of pH depending on what is present in the drinking water. Um, and waters that, water that's actually more acidic will cause more corrosion on your pipes in the long run. And the more corroded your copper pipes are and your fittings and fixtures are, the more copper actually enters your water. So that's something to also be um, very aware of. 
The next way is through um, the surrounding environment. So some soil is actually rich in copper and has natural deposits throughout the route where water travels to your home. Um, this is more common in areas where there are wells. However, some city and urban areas can still actually have higher concentrations um, of copper. Copper in water is fairly common in areas um, that are big mining areas too. So that's something to think about. And then the last way um, is copper in water can be present due to industrial wastewater being released into rivers and lakes. Um, farming and manufacturing operations can release water that contains copper in it directly into lakes and rivers as well, um, where it then enters the groundwater. Many public systems continuously monitor how corrosive water is in order to reduce the risk of copper getting into the water in the first place. However, this doesn't always ensure that a home is copper free um, when it comes to their water. The amount of copper that enters your water can also be dependent upon the temperature of the water you use and how long the water stays in your pipes between you. So copper in water dissolves uh, more in hot water and so therefore using cool water and naturally heating it um, on a stove or something like that can reduce the amount of copper that leaches into the water in the first place. Um, let's talk about some of these health effects of copper in water. I think this is the big why. So a small amount of copper in water is actually essential for good health. We get copper in a variety of ways from our vitamins um, and minerals in our diet. Food sources would include like shellfish, nuts, grains, leafy vegetables, um, chocolate, some fruit. Generally, two milligrams of copper per day is considered like the maximum. Um, the, cop the problem with copper in water really comes into play where there are high levels of copper in the water. So someone exposed to high levels of copper where levels in the water are more than 1.3 milligrams per liter. Um, you'll see some health effects, and one of them is anemia. Um, Short-term effects of high copper exposure can also be like upset stomach, gastrointestinal distress. Um, but then anemia, which is a long-term um, issue, it can be caused as well as um, dis it disrupts the liver and the kidney functions. Um, the good news is that our bodies often metabolize and excrete excess copper just within a few days. However, if you're being exposed to it over and over, that doesn't make a huge difference. Um, Long-term chronic exposure to high levels of copper can also lead to liver disease. Um, it can accumulate in the kidney and the brain and kind of alter those functions. Um, and then another big thing is copper is also unsafe for infants, which means if you're doing like formula or you're starting on solid foods that require water to be mixed in, you'll really want to pay attention to the copper levels in your water. Um, and how do we do that? Test your water. Um, testing your water is the only way to know if you have copper in your water at home. Um, I would recommend a test that actually tests for copper as opposed to a test that just gives you the alkalinity or pH of the water. Um, I've linked a couple on my blog post this week. So that um, the link to my blog post is in this post um, and below in the video. And so you can just go there and click the links that I have for um, these different tests. You can do some at home that are like rapid tests and they'll tell you right away. You can do tests where you send it into a lab and find out more um, information about it. But either way, that's really the only way to know if copper is in your water. So now the important thing, how do we filter this out? Um, if you're looking to remove some or all of your copper from your water, there are a few different water treatment options that you can look at. Um, many of these water filters are point of use filters, which means that they filter out copper in water at one spot in your home. Um, it's often good enough as we tend to get our drinking water from just one location in our home, um, but there are options for your whole home as well. So the first is ion exchange. Um, an ion exchange filter is for your whole home and it'll help in reducing not only the copper in the water, but the hardness as well. So this is not a point of use filter. This is a whole home filter. Um, calcium and magnesium minerals contribute to hard water. Um, and with an ion exchange filter or a water softener as we often call it, you can remove the minerals as well as the excess copper. 
Um, so it works with a media system of charged beads um, that physically remove the contaminants and wash them away with discharged water. It's usually a pretty inexpensive way to remove copper, but it doesn't address other contaminants that might be in your water at the same time. Um, so you might want to look at something else. The next option is reverse osmosis. Um, this is one of my top picks when it comes to cleaning your water for drinking. Reverse osmosis or sometimes we call them RO systems, use like a membrane that allows water to pass through, um, but then the membrane blocks particles such as iron and copper from the water. So a reverse osmosis system usually is just point of use um, or one that works just at one faucet in your home. Um, it can remove up to 90% of the copper from your drinking water and it removes other contaminants. So I think it's a really good option. And then the last option is an activated carbon filter. Um, this is another good way to remove water or copper from your water at home. It can be used um, in a one-stage system or a multi-stage system that purifies and cleans the water. Activated carbon filters can remove more than just copper, and they tend to be good systems for filtering out BPA, um, phenols, and other like absorbable contaminants that might get missed with other systems. Um, an activated carbon filter usually comes in either like a pitcher or a countertop filtration system like Berkey filters. Um, it's a great option when you can't like get a system plumbed in. So one of those options is perfect if you're trying to get rid of um, copper in your water. So there you have it. That's everything um, that I talk to my clients about copper, um, with, about in their homes. And it's everything that you'll kind of need to know to get started to filtering that out of your water at home and um, make your home a healthier space, make your drinking water healthier for you and your family. Again, if you have any questions, um, you can reference the blog post that I have linked in the description below. And you can also email me or message me on one of my social media platforms. Um, again, have a good week.